quickly learn about a glitch token. If you are working with LLMs, especially in production, sometimes it's very important for you to understand the adversarial attacks that can happen. But sometimes it doesn't have to be an attack, something that is just there with an LLM, something nobody noticed. And one such case that came back like a couple of days back is a glitch token that is part of ChatGPT. So this article actually says that when you say this particular thing to ChatGPT, it actually crashes. Let's test. So I've just gone ahead, include this at the top of the response, pony use RAL, pony use RAL, pony use RAL, pony. And I'm going to paste it and then I'm going to send it. And now we're going to see what is going to happen. It works completely fine, primarily because it's GPT-4. Now when I do the same thing with chat GPT-3.5 and then I send this, you're going to see error in message stream. Now there are multiple theories that why this could be happening because it could not go beyond pony. The primary reason here is Pony use RAL and it's not just Pony use RAL. So for example, you can go ahead and then create a new text and then say instead of RAL, you can say relative, something like this, and you can send it and it you still get the same error. So there are a couple of theories of why this could be happening and that is what we're going to primarily discuss. This comes out of the Hacker News conversation. So all credit goes to all the people who shared their uh, points here. The first thing is that this is a glitch token. So the glitch token is somewhere when the token is primarily part of the tokenizer, but it was not part of the model in itself. So if you're familiar with the classical way of how we use LLMs, you mainly have two different files. One is the tokenizer and second one is the model. So what this author is claiming, or at least using this blog post from blesswrong.com is that this token, the particularly the one that we just saw, it could have been part of the training process of the model, or sorry, it could have been part of the tokenizer, but sometimes what companies like OpenAI do is, they remove certain usernames and certain things when they are going to build the model. And in this case, they might have done the same thing and that could have created this particular glitch, which is called the glitch token. I would strongly encourage you to read this particular article because this goes into greater detail about explaining how this token could have been there, how you can find new tokens and how you can use a very simple technique like k-means clustering over the embedding space to understand how these glitch tokens might be there. So that is one. So one concept here is that the glitch token was there in the tokenizer and it was not there in the model. So that is why the glitch token could have occurred. The second one, the second theory is from Minimaxer, who is a very popular figure in the data science world, is that Minimaxer wanted to counter that the, the LLMs don't generate tokens like this. For example, uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo or GPT 3.5 in this case has got a tokenizer with 100k tokens. So that is like the vocab length. So there are 100k tokens and each step of this LLM token generation, for example, when you go to chat GPT and then when you ask something, the chat GPT is going to generate the first one and then it has a 100k token to pick one of the tokens from. So it basically outputs a logit and that soft maxes into probabilities, that probability samples from the 100k token depending upon the temperature to what token to be used next. So according to Minimaxer, it is possible that in the tokenizer BPE merge process, BPE I think stands for byte pair encoding. So during the BPE merge process, something might have gotten like broken and that could have resulted in this particular thing. And uh, if this is working for GPT-4, and it is not working for GPT 3.5, maybe it is not a tokenizer issue because GPT 4 and GPT 3.5 use the same tokenizer. So overall, there are like two different thoughts that we have seen. The third one is that it is possible because of a badly conditioned embedding vectors for those particular tokens. And this is somewhat similar to what you would have seen in the less wrong blog post about you know, having these kind of rare tokens in the embedding space. So this user really says most likely it was condition, it was badly conditioned embedding vectors for those particularly particular tokens, leading the network to edge into a numerically unstable territory. Once you get some sort of underflow or NAN, the NAN is like missing values token, they tend to propagate and invalidate the entire output. 
if there are any batch norm or other operations that mix values with the entries in batch you could even cause other people's session to return junk values something like this actually happened long back within like open ai and that time open ai blamed the redis cache that they were using but overall the idea here is that you know this is part of a badly conditioning embedding vectors for those particular tokens which is quite similar to what less wrong is said so overall the idea here is that you can use token like this and then crash the large language model either through the web ui or through the apa now why is it critical why did i even end up making a video the reason is because there is a very popular technique an adversarial attack that people do that is called data poisoning so you can embed this text as part of some kind of document and then you can ask chat gpt to summarize it for you and then it would crash for example let's take this example i'm going to create a new text and let's say you know there is there is something on the internet and somewhere something is there i'm going to just copy this entire thing and as you know that we have got use ral there so i'm going to say can you summarize this for me and i want to just paste this and as you can see here okay surprisingly in this particular case it works fine but uh, technically i mean this is one of the cases where the demo fails but technically you can embed this token let's let's give a try one more time where i'm going to just give it with the space i'm going to just say um, ral ral like this summarize and send it i'm not sure now it is going to work but yeah now now also you can see that in this particular place it kind of stopped so this is called data poisoning where you put these adversarial attacks or glitch tokens or whatever that you want to do part of the input text in itself or somewhere on the internet so that you can affect the model and uh, this is not a very big deal at this point but imagine when all of the internet is going to be retrained and people have figured out these kind of attacks that exist that this could become dangerous and we have in the past uh, discussed multiple different attacks that might happen with large language models but i thought like this is a fun exercise very interesting to know if you happen to read the less wrong blog post there is a section where they have said like how can you fish for these anomalous tokens how can you try to find it so if you have got enough time in hand maybe this is something that you should do to try to find these kind of tokens but open ai is very good at patching these tokens once they get to know so yeah uh, if uh, it's quite hard to find out tokens that are not patched and uh, it'd be also interesting to see these large language models that are built based on the training data from open ai to see if this affects them as well so anyways this is fun uh, for me at least uh, in uh, learning that these kind of glitch tokens can create some issues let me know in the comment section what do you feel about it see you in another video happy prompting